high rapper, man hour. You already know. It's live. It's raw. It's going down. Like this. I'm going around and letting everybody know that they welcome to the show. Yep. It's the latest thing you ever see. You already know. Yep. Let me introduce you to your host of the hour. If you Mike and Mike, Mike and Mike. Yeah, it's the man hour. Yep. Got the hottest plays, huh. all the breaking news. Yeah. Every rumor, every trade, every breaking bruise. Mm-hmm. Tighten up the screws. Yeah, it's going down. Had to say, what the fuck? Huh? never watered down. Woo. It's going down. I'll be rolling up. Yep. And if you buy it or you sell it, then you make the cut. Watch you flip it back. I can double up. I got some ratchet for that ass. I'ma burn it up. Gotta check the rules and know that it be fair or foul. Rep for the whistle, coach throw the towel. We can do this on the field, on side of the lines. It's the man now we go, now we go alive. And what is up, guys? Michael Buckhunt, you're here with the Mike and Mike Man Hour. If you guys are new here, consider heading over to the Mike and Mike Man Hour YouTube page and hitting that subscribe button. That would mean the world to me today. We are sitting about 16 hundred viewer or subscribers we'd like to get up to 1700 by the end of the month that'd be fantastic we've got an excellent show for you guys on today on tap for today i should should say it is tuesday that means we welcome matt benz ends to the show and his power ranking so matt are you ready let's go ahead and bring in matt right always ready buck man you already know yeah so matt uh we had two NFL games last night. You had the Kansas City Chiefs yeah. sur- surviving versus the Patriots, and then you had the Green Bay Packers pretty much walloping the Atlanta Falcons at the yep. end of the day. Did you put any stock into those games and your um, power rankings moving forward? Uh, no, I mean, they were they were clean enough to keep them exactly where they were. I mean, still, I think Kansas City has the edge right now just because of Patty, but that doesn't mean Aaron Rodgers isn't playing out of his mind as well. So I think having them where they are, staying where they are, that kind of edges out the top of the list. So Yeah, I was, of course, you know, I am an avid trash talker in our trash talk groups, like uh, obviously, and then I, I see people saying they're, that the Patriots would have beat the Kansas City Chiefs last night if they would have had Cam Newton. News alert: Cam Newton doesn't play defense for the New England Patriots. He plays yeah. offense. So I don't. I, I'm not for sure how big a difference that, that would have really made. Be, be, because you know the Kansas City Chiefs offense plays to the level of the competition. So if Correct. they're so if they're going for point for point, you know we would have saw a totally different game. But we didn't. Do you think Cam yeah. Newton playing last night hurt the New? hurt the New England Patriots like at, like at all? I do. I think it hurt them just not having their leader, their captain on the squad out on the field. I think Cam is way more, obviously way more dynamic than Stidham and right. and the bum that started the game helped me out. <laughs> Boyer. Exactly. It's just like, <laughs> so you get Cam out there, you're going to have the more electricity, I think. But like you said, I think Patty would have brought that next level as well. I think they could kind of coast through this week knowing that it was all the chaos with COVID and things of that nature and not having Cam. I think KC just realized we just need W and let's move on to next week. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is a game for uh, – so we were talking about the Chiefs-Patriots game where the Chiefs did outlast the New England Patriots in the end. This was a win-win situation for the New England Patriots and a lose-lose situation for the Kansas City Chiefs, meaning no no matter how the Chiefs won last night, they they were going to say the only reason why you won because Cam Newton wasn't there. And yes. if the Patriots were to win the game, they said, oh, the Patriots are, are, are that good, and they lost like they did. They say, well, we lost because Cam Newton – wasn't there do you agree with those statements there oh completely it was completely a brilliant take on how they could have a loophole into the next loss of their season it it just leaves the door wide open for excuses and it leaves belichick in the background not having to get the blame for the loss and i mean it kind of is i mean for those people that i've heard that said that stidham would have been just fine as their starting quarterback this season eat your feet like put your boot in your mouth right now because the dude's trash. He's not a backup quarterback, and that's why he was a third string quarterback, and it showed last night. Right. Um. So the Patriots were probably going to be without Cam Newton for another week. I'm not for sure what the uh, quarantine process is right now. If, if it's ten days, fourteen days, or just two, two or three negative tests in a row, because right. I believe he's already testing negative for COVID. If the Patriots were to lose their next game, 
without Cam, is that going to put stock into your rankings moving forward, like at all? Uh, not really. So, are you saying that if they were to win without Cam or lose without, if they Cam? were to lose without Cam next week, right now, I mean, as you can see, and everybody else will see, they're not in right now, and I don't think another loss is gonna is gonna be significant. I don't see them getting back into the rankings without two more wins, and that better come soon because if you're stacking two losses before those two wins, you're not making it back in. Let's be honest. Yeah. yeah. So, so speaking of dropping people from the top ten here, yeah. uh, before we start releasing the 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 top ten here live on the Mike and Mike Man Hour, yeah, you 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 did drop two teams out of the top ten. One of being which is San Francisco 49ers, even though yeah. they played a okay game versus the, the Philadelphia Eagles, littered with injuries. Why did you finally drop them out of your top ten? Uh, just a loss to Philly. I mean, Philly in of itself is not a good squad. I mean. They don't have starters for most positions, and that's why when you lose to Philly like that, even though you got Mullins, uh, I mean, Kittle was the the 49ers that whole game. Just totally went beast mode on them. Um, but that doesn't mean they can't get back in. You know, I still am high on San Fran. I don't know why, um, but they, <laughs> they're just a good squad to me, and I think that they, they're on that borderline. But with that L, like I said, I'm going to need to see two more wins out of them, and they better come soon. Okay, and speaking of the other team that you did drop, you kind of alluded to it earlier, the New England Patriots. Yeah. Did the loss to Kansas City ultimately drop them out of that, or do you are you seeing other things happen? I think the loss contributed to it, but also the teams that I moved up into the top 10, I think they contributed more. I think that was more of the benefactor of the whole thing, is just that these teams, these two teams that I moved up are playing better than the two teams that dropped out, and that's just... That's how mine works. So yeah, and speaking of the teams that are playing better, let's go ahead and jump in at number ten. You do have the Cleveland Browns coming yeah. after the coming after a week one loss to the Baltimore Ravens. They're thirty eight to six. They have yeah. rattled off three straight wins, beating the Bengals thirty five to thirty, the football team thirty four to twenty, and outlasting the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday forty nine to thirty eight. Explain why do you have the Browns in the top 10 right now? Yeah, so first and foremost, with that 3-1 and one record, I like that as well. I mean, for the Browns to only have one loss at this point in the season is pretty incredible in of itself, especially since I still don't have a lot of faith in Baker Mayfield. It, another thing that really hurts them, especially with that injury to Nick Chubb, but the way that they're playing – and being creative on the offensive side of the ball, that electricity comes out and looks like they're actually having fun. They're actually utilizing an Odell Beckham Jr., which is huge in of itself as well. Um, I am very excited to see them play the Colts, who I'm hype a hype train on them, but that defense and to see what they can do in that matchup, it's going to be a real tough one for them. I think it will benefit them that they are at home, regardless of how many fans are in the stands. Right. And just to add to your point there, Nick Chubb is out until I believe it was six, six weeks. They they yep. put him on the IR four, but they'd still have two outstanding running backs back there. One being which is cream hunt. So I don't see any drop off in the, any running game whatsoever. Cause cream hunt is a starter on any other team in the NFL. I think this yeah. year besides maybe the Dallas Cowboys. Sure. Uh, so with that being said, you, you did to allude that they are three and one, but look at the three wins that they've had against the Bengals. Yep. the football team, and then the Cowboys. Yes, the, the Cowboys are still going to probably win the NFC East, and you know their their record right now does not reflect what the Dallas Cowboys are going to be toward right. the end of the season. But do you really put stock in those two of those three wins there? Um, it's hard to right because I mean you got the Washington football team, and you said the Bengals was the other one, correct? Yes. Uh, I mean that is tough in of itself, but I think those are two. Two teams, well, at least the Bengals are a team that's on the up and up, you know, and things of that nature. And they're still competing, whether it's not at a completely high level. But for them to keep pace with Dak, who give and point, I mean, he had a lot of garbage, garbage time stats that came into play there. But still to keep up with that team and do what they did. And like I said, they are an explosive team. Can their defense rebound and from giving up 38 points? That will be tough because the Colts don't put up a lot of points. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens when it comes down to like old school, you know, play by play football and not being a shootout. Yeah, I am. This this game is really intriguing me next week is the Colts versus the Browns because I am high on the Colts as well. Like I had them finishing 10 and six on that, like on the season and winning the NFC South and with the or sorry, the AFC AFC South. And, And with the news coming out of Houston yesterday, I do believe 
it's it's it is almost clear cut and dry that they're going to win that division unless Tennessee decides to show up a little bit here. So yeah. you do have the Browns are coming in at number ten, and then at number nine you have a highly highly good team right now is the L.A. Rams. They are three sure. and one as well, coming off of a win versus the Cowboys at the Eagles, losing to the Buffalo Bills uh, 30, 35 thirty five thirty two. And what people say, pass interference call should have changed the game. Yada yada yada. Right. Same thing could happen in like in the Cowboys game. So probably eat your words on that one. And then a seventeen to nine outlasting of the Giants on Sunday. What are your thoughts about the Rams? Yeah, so I mean, it is very interesting because they played the Giants this last week, and then they played the Washington Football Team next week. I expect for them to have a bounce back offensively this coming week against Washington. Even though, like me and you have talked before, the Washington Football Team has a decent defense. I mean, it's not elite, right. but it's still going to give you problems. And if the Giants only allow you to score seventeen points, that's scary going into next week. And there's a lot of things that this Rams team needs to work on, but they have the talent. They have the record of three and one, so that earns them a spot at number nine. Yeah, so one of one of my biggest concerns about the Rams moving forward was like I I did pick them to go five and a five, five and eleven because I, I, I you know with the with the subtraction of Todd Gurley from the roster, the digression of Jared Goff last season and the performance of like last season, I was really low on them. But right, but right now, you know, people are high on them. You know, being three and one winning the way they they have won, but are the Rams being overhyped right now a little bit? Uh, maybe. You know, I still think they got to figure out what they're going to do with Malcolm Brown in the backfield. I think they need to really decide on is he going to be the way to go or do you – deviate from that option they are so much more dynamic when they throw the ball but that obviously depends a lot on Jared Goff's shoulders he's got Cup he's got Higby he's got Robert Woods Gerald Everett things of that nature so he's got plenty of options when it comes that way it's just Ken Sean McVay avoid the hype slump you know he came in and took everybody by storm and now all of a sudden it's like you have a shit year last year now you need to rebound otherwise everybody's gonna say ah it was a mirage that's not real so they're an interesting squad man you know i i think that they can go the distance but they can also shit the bed too so it'll be cool to see what happens do you think the 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 losing of Todd Gurley in the offseason is going to ultimately hurt the Rams in the end like when it comes down to it because right at, right at now their leading rusher is somebody that pretty much many people have never heard of unless you're Cowboys fans from the playoffs a couple of years ago when Henderson ran all over the Dallas Cowboys defense yeah. uh, but Henderson is the leading rusher for the Rams right now I believe right about three or four hundred yards if, if I'm not mistaken sure so is the is that is that is that it is the dynamic threat of Todd Gurley not being on the Rams going to hurt them in the end? As of this year, yeah, it is. I think it will definitely be just because even if his you know arthritic knee is still bothering him, even if he's right. you know on the injury report week in and week out, it doesn't matter because he's still Todd Gurley. He still holds that respect on the defensive side of the ball. So they have to they have to scheme for that. They have to make decisions when they're planning for that game. Daryl Henderson is a monster, but right. that's what I think. You have to transition into just letting him be your elite back, your lead back, your your number one back. And they have a lot of problems with doing that because they don't want to put so much pressure on one back because it hurt Gurley in the end. So they want to kind of spread out. And that's a lot of what McVay was talking about preseason in that he wants to have you know a stable of backs and not just put the pressure on one because it eventually takes lifetime away from their backs. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a stable back like like the stable backs uh, is kind of the norm in the NFL. Yeah, right now, even if you look at the Dallas Cowboys, they have you know arguably the best running back in like in the league, and they still have a duo back there with Pollard and Zeke. So yeah. I definitely see what you're saying there, and good, good, good point there. So just to recap, so far you have the Browns at number ten up from last week, the Rams at number nine up from last week as well. And then yep. coming in at number eight, we do have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They lost week one to the Saints in a pretty good game, 34-23, and they have since rattled off three wins versus the Packers, or sorry, the Panthers at the Broncos and the Chargers as well. Sure. Buc- Buccaneers at number at number, at number eight. Many people are high on them, saying Super Bowl champs. Yeah. Are you high on them as well, or like what are your thoughts about the Bucs? 
I'm high on Tom Brady. Even with his age, I'm still high on Tom Brady because he's Tom Brady. He is consistent, and until you see the inconsistencies, you kind of have to still ride with it. I think another interesting thing about it is they didn't have Godwin, you know, and what are they going to do? Are they going to have to spread the ball out more? Is it still going to be Mike Evans' freaking show? Um, It's interesting to see. I I do think that right now the wins that they have aren't necessarily – crazy good i mean they they beat the chargers by seven yeah that's that's nice but next week against the bears which i expect it to still be a blowout even though the bears have the defense that they have um i'm just not high on the bears and therefore i think they got another w and then we go from there but yeah i'm not as high on the bucks just because i can see them falling apart they're like those teams that you see everybody hyping up and then they just shit the bed, kind of like the Browns last year. Same kind of thing. You right. know, all that talent in the world, but where does it go? Can it be cohesive, and can they carry it throughout the season? So Much like the Dallas Cowboys, like like as well, people saying Super Bowl yeah. team every year and their yep. habitual 8-8 eight and eight team moving forward. So speaking of habitual 8-8 eight and eight teams, yeah, possibly the New Orleans Saints. They have some, some say struggled a little bit here, but they are 2-2. Sure. Two Going into week five, you 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 had them at number seven last week at like at like like as well. Yep. Uh, recapping their season so far, they beat the Bucks week one, lost to the Raiders on Monday at Vegas, and they lost to the Packers on Sunday night foot, football. And then they come back from fourteen down versus the Detroit Lions. But who hasn't come back from fourteen down versus the Detroit sure. Lions? Like like at this point, yeah. Give me your thoughts on the Saints. Why are they at number seven? Uh, they're at number seven, and they stayed at number seven because I feel like they beat a very good defense in the Detroit Lions. A lot of people are saying, oh, Detroit will always be Detroit, and they'll never change. I still get a lot of respect to that defense. They do pressure the ball, and they also have good DBs. So that's where that kind of left them where they're at. I think the big thing to take out of this last week against the Lions was how Drew Brees performed. I talked about that on Benzie's bit earlier is just, you know, he, he allowed himself to be himself. Maybe it's not the cannon, but it's spreading the ball around and it's not dump off after dump off after dump off. He, he was able to kind of revert to a little bit and show a little bit of what he still got left, even though we don't know how much is left in the tank, but it's probably running on empty, but we can see what he's got coming this next week and uh, against the Chargers and see what a, a young Herbert can, can put up against them. <laughs> right. A, and, and and I think in a very underrated uh, Chargers team, like as yeah. well, they went, they went to toe to toe with the Bucks last week and, yeah. you know, they are a quarterback away and Herbert could be their answer for the Chargers there. Yeah. But, but, but many people are saying that the Saints only won last week was because of Drew Brees. You are saying that he was running on empty. You know, you don't know how much right. is left, left, left in the tank. You guys also have to realize that Michael Thomas has been out since week one. Yep. Could that be the reason why they lost two, two, two straight and then struggled last week as well? I mean, you call it struggling putting up 35 points. You, you can call it what sure. you want to call it. But once Michael Thomas is back, the Saints are still probably, you know, they're, they're still a 13 and three team, I think. Right. Yeah. And I think the Saints didn't necessarily struggle last this last game against the Lions. I think they struggled a lot more the week before just because you saw a lot more dump offs to Alvin and things of that nature. And people are saying, oh, Drew Brees is done. He's capped. I don't think he's done after this last week with the Lions. I'll clarify on that just to see him spread out the ball and do what he's always done in the past. Um, So I think a lot of the big things is, yeah, you get Michael Thomas back. Any team in the league that gets Michael Thomas back is going to be a step or two or three higher so right it's, it's intriguing to see my big thing is can Drew Brees stay consistent and not look his age which is going to be tough to see and then can that defense pull their head out of their ass and really realize like they are the Saints defense and they have tons of veteran talent tons of leadership they just have to come and wake up so we'll see what happens yeah you are 100% correct about the Saints so I um, mean I'm I'm glad you kept them where they're at because you know they they have a lot to prove but they also yeah. have a, like a, like a lot to lose as like, like as well very yeah. very good spot for the for the for the, for the Saints now going into undefeated teams you coming in at number six you do have the Seattle Seahawks yeah. un, unchanged from last week as well the last time the Seattle Seahawks went four and zero was 2013 and that was a year that they won their Super Bowl tell me what you think about the Seattle Seahawks moving forward yeah so I. Russ is Russ. 
He's my MVP right now. I think he's speaking. He does that without even having to worry about it. I, he is got a little more leash this year. And also Carson has just been a monster to have a guy that was questionable to be even play, come back quick and do what he's doing in both the passing and the rushing game is awesome to see. Um, the big thing with me is going to be their defense. And, you know, yes, they only they only gave up 23 points to the Dolphins, and they they kind of took that game away. But Lockett didn't even have a reception the whole game, if I'm not mistaken. So that in of yep. itself is crazy to me. Um, but just to see what they're doing, I think Pete Carroll can turn it around defensively and coach these guys up and get them meshing. Um, but that's why I kind of kept them stagnant. I realize they are a 4-0 team. And that does have pull in it. I think they are going right. to wall up the Vikings this week, and we'll see what happens from there. Yeah, and and that is coming from a Vikings fan, as you see the hoodie there, as Mike Rees from oh, Twist yeah. Nation, like like over there, point, pointed out. But looking at the Seahawks' schedule moving forward, they might have the hardest five or six game stretch in yeah. all of the NFL right now. Yes, I am including your Vikings in there because the Vikings they are a good team, it's just they have a very very tough schedule. And, yeah. you know, things, things just aren't quite clicking right now. But looking at the Seahawks' yeah. schedule moving forward, they travel to Arizona. They play the 49ers. They're at Buffalo. They're at L.A. And then they play the Cardinals again. I mean, yeah. I think a 500 span there between those six six games is, you know, is is a very, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Reasonable. It, it is, I think yeah, it's reasonable. Yeah, a yeah. reasonable expectation. If yeah. they go 500 in those next six games, yeah. uh, do you foresee them being in your top 10 still? Or like, where do you? Yeah, for sure. Fall? I think that's what they're in a nice spot right now where they can afford to, to take a couple L's, especially I could see it maybe happening through Buffalo. Um, I think they will take advantage of the um, Cardinals. But the big thing for me is to realize in those next six games, if they win out, they're the undisputed number one, are they not? Uh, yeah, easily. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, if you are dominating the teams, I mean, I don't think the Seahawks are really necessarily dominating teams, but no. they are they're, they're winning with style. You cannot yeah. say that about the Kansas City Chiefs right now. Two of their wins were very, very ugly, one being the Chargers and one last night versus the Patriots. Yeah. Now, if the Seahawks continue to do what they do and the Packers continue to do what do what they do, I think those are your one and two teams right yeah. there. And, and like you can flip off of me the way you want one, a one B to be honest. And right now I would, I would have the Seahawks probably up at number two anyways, okay. above Kansas city chiefs, to be honest. Okay. But yeah, like I'm pretty high on, on the Seahawks this year. Awesome. But guys, we are going to take a quick little break here on the other side of the break. We're going to release the other top five of the NFL power rankings. This is the Mike and Mike man hour guys. Well, we will be right back. Welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Head over to MikeAndMikeManHour.com to get one of these sexy little hats there. And we got hoodies and t-shirts as well. If you don't feel like getting any of that stuff, feel free to drop a donation as well. We'll give you definitely shout-outs when everybody has dropped off a donation like Floppy Seconds did just the other week. It was just a $5 donation, but everything helps the show improve a, like, a, like a little bit here. So MikeAndMikeManHour.com. Check us out. Also, coming up, let me get the banner rolling here. As you guys heard last or yesterday, I should 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 say Mike and Mike Man Hour. I should say Man Hour after dark is starting next Monday, 10 p.m. East Coast time. So we'll we'll still come at you on the Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. East Coast time. But then after dark, Monday through Thursday, 10 p.m. East Coast time with my man Brandon Coons, myself, and LeBlanc. That sounds dangerous, little 
set up their hum hum Oh man, that sounds <laughs> that sounds. I'm glad it's after dark because the kids will yeah. hopefully be in bed by then. <laughs> they won't be able to catch it. They'll probably go to your YouTube page and watch it when the parents aren't watching them. But yeah, we'll see what happens. Definitely, man. Uh, so, <laughs> my, man hour after dark guys starting next Monday, 10 p.m. East Coast time, right there on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Mike and Mike Man Hour. Now could continue with our power rankings here. Coming yep. at number five, Ben, you have the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yep. They have beat the New York football giants, the Denver Broncos, and the Texans. And then obviously they had a bye last week with the whole COVID thing that is happening and and, and whatnot. So they uh, they dropped from number three to number five last week without even playing a game. Explain to me why that happened. Well, I think as a team right now, they even though they didn't have to play this week, I still think they're one of the most balanced, if not the most balanced team in the NFL right now. I like uh, that. that. You know, that that defense in of itself is going to keep teams low scoring. And I love Big Ben this year. I think the benefit of not playing this last week is going to help them a lot, at least through the middle – of the season. You know, it might come back to haunt him towards the end of the year, but to get a James Conner with an extra week of rest to get, you know, Juju to give Ben, of course, but then your defensive guys who are taking just a beating because they're so physical. So I do keep them, you know, at, I like them at the five spot. I think that's, that's solid in of itself. It's hard to keep a team that doesn't play when the rest of the league does play. And we'll find that out with bye weeks coming up. Like, the pack and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I like the, them a lot. I think the three and O record speaks for itself, even though it's against teams that aren't exactly good. And hopefully they can run the table on another shitty team in the Eagles. <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, I, I hear what you say about the bye week being good for the Steelers. Yada, yada. They can hear sure. players, yada, yada, yada. Yep. But on the flip side, it come week four. It did not come week uh, nine, week yep. 12. So they have to play what twelve games in a row now. Yeah, or you no, know, it's thirteen games in a row now. I should say, yeah. without a bye, without a bye week or a break. And if right. they don't get the best record in the AFC, they don't get a bye week till the end of the season. So yep. you're looking at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 games in a row yep. for 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 them. And with that, and with that being said. Yeah, yeah, they are a dominant team right now. But if you're looking forward, Steelers fans should probably be holding their breast that nothing happens. Right, and that's exactly it. I think you almost have have to expect the worst to happen, which is an injury to one of your pillars on your team. That's just saying, especially on the offensive side of the ball, they are injury prone everywhere. So for them to not expect an injury, it is what it is. And they have plenty of room to fall down the list. As you see, they're at number five that I could easily see them being a team that towards the end of the year, isn't on the list just because of an, an, an injury that could sabotage their season because they are having to stretch guys thin. So we'll see. Yeah. And football talk says, hi, what is up football talks? Welcome to the show. Man, I'll be sure to hit that subscribe button, my man. So we are going over Matt Benz's, uh, as I should bring myself onto the screen here, we're doing Matt Benz's power rankings from the All Access Sports Network. You can also find Matt Benz on Benzie's Bit and also Twist. So Benzie's yeah. Bit is aired on Tuesdays uh, at 11.30, I think it is, right? Uh, Matt, yeah, right, right. That's when I go live usually, but otherwise you can listen to it on All Access Sports Network on Fridays. I think that's at 1 o'clock. So. Right, and you, yeah. and then you can listen to live twist on their Facebook page at uh, one p.m. East Coast time, noon Central time. When you guys normally go live, yeah. but just go ahead head over to the Facebook page and like it, and they'll let you know when they go live. Yeah, so, and twistsportstalk.com for all other things as well. There so. you go, perfect. Yeah. Twistsportstalk.com. So just to recap, here we have number ten, the Cleveland Browns; number nine, the LA Rams; number eight, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers; number seven, the New Orleans Saints. Number six, the Seattle Seahawks. Number five, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then coming in at number four, we have the Baltimore Ravens coming off of a win versus the Washington football team. 31-17, not the best wins that they've had all season. But the Washington, like we said, the Washington football team is a very good defense. But they were out without Chase Young and Lamar Jackson just doesn't perform well after losses or perform right. well in the postseason either. With that yep. being said... Tell me, tell me about the Ravens. Why you got them at number at number four and unchanged from last week? Yeah, because they're like I was talking about with the Steelers. I think the Ravens are one of those others that are competing to be the most balanced team in football. The quarterback play is so sloppy right now, though, and it's interesting to see that they are 
reverting from who they are as a squad, which is a run heavy rushing lead the league in rushing. You know, we're going to beat you by our QB rushing or our double headed backs of Dobbins and Ingram. And instead they're kind of reverting and playing down to the teams that they're playing currently level. Um, right. They're, they're not laying on the gas like they used to do at least during the regular season last season. And just to see why they're doing that, it's it's frustrating. It's especially frustrating when you have Mark Ingram all over the place in fantasy football, and you know that he's not done, but they're treating him as almost as if he is. So I yeah. kept them where they were. Yeah, so uh, just to add to your point there, um, maybe the Ravens are learning, uh, taking a play out of the playbook from the uh, uh, Patriots, saying, like, we don't need to win. 16 games this yeah. season we want to win in january so maybe taking the foot off the gas i like it like a little bit we'll, pre- we'll preserve them in january and beyond however sure. it's not going to help too much but just to add to your point there lamar jackson is the leading rusher on the team right now with 39 attempts for 235 yards mark sure. ingram like you prefer like you just mentioned there only has 34 touches for 148 yards yeah so if you guys want to keep using the, you keep using your quarterback like like that, and if yeah. and I think if Lamar Jackson gets hurt, misses a quarter, misses a game, <laughs> this 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 team is screwed. A dumpster yes. fire. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, like, uh, who is their backup? RG three. So you got yeah. RG three as your backup, and I mean that's smart, kind of, just because he's similar, but he's not right. Lamar. And you know what I mean? It, injury it, prone as well. Injury prone as well. But he can kind of scheme the same way. But I'm telling you, if you lose the MVP, it's a wrap. This team is a dumpster fire if that happens. And there's nowhere that they can go. Yeah, well, they can go to the bottom of the top or the power power rankings here 100%. Yeah. And a team that keeps going up and up and up for you is the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. They are now 4-0 on the season, beating I am – Thinking an over overlooked uh, L.A. or a Las Vegas Raiders team. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm kind of surprised at what the Raiders have been doing so far this season. But tell me about the Bills. Like you had them at number five last week, up two spots now to number three. Yeah, so it's a team in Buffalo that I really don't want to give the respect that they deserve to, and that's why I've kind of hesitantly continued to move them up spots, but just the way Josh Allen is performing, and then you have that defense on the other side of the ball. Um, you know, I definitely agree with you that I feel that the Raiders are under um, underdogs this year in the fact that, I mean, they beat a good Saints team, and just to see that they lost, they, the Bills beat the Raiders 30 to 23, and now they have to go to another big matchup this week against the Titans. That's going to be interesting as well. Um, so, yeah, so it's it's interesting to see, and uh, we'll go from there. And as Tip chimes in, I believe he yeah. was referring to the um, – who was he referring to? He had to been the Ravens they were referring to, I guess. I don't know because that was about sure. five, six minutes ago. Uh, but nonetheless, like looking at this Buffalo Bills team, Josh Allen is playing at MVP caliber yep. level. I mean, hands hands down, I like I think he is the MVP first through the first quarter of the season. The Bills defense is amazing. And we you you want to talk about tough schedules moving forward. Look at this Bills schedule moving forward. They're at Tennessee, then they Chiefs at home, then they're Jets. I, by a week more or less, but then they play sure. the Patriots, Seahawks, and the Cardinals. Yeah. And then they round out with the Chargers, 49ers, Steel. I mean, they got a tough, tough eight games ahead of them. So we're going yeah. to see what the Buffalo Bills are made of yep. coming soon. So do you foresee them being in the top 10 like at the end of this season? I do. You know, another interesting thing about the Bills that you talked about their schedule. Well, there's so many good teams on that schedule. So there's going to be so many more looks at a lot of the teams that are in my power rankings right now. You're going to be able to see how they rank because they're going to be playing this exclusive Bills team that, you know, is so hard to scheme for because you just watch what they can do. And I'm not comparing Josh Allen to Patrick Mahomes, but he is a scheming nightmare to have to coach on the defensive side of the ball. So, I mean, he he's showing consistency and a lot of people give him shit because, oh, he's not accurate, things of that nature. Well, when guys have, when you have route runners like Stefan Diggs, who is 
arguably one of the best route runners in the league. Yep. They're open, wide open a lot of the time. So, I mean, if, if they play their cards smart and keep doing what they're doing, I, I foresee them in the top 10 for the rest of the season. Yeah, and I like I said, I, I believe I had them going 10-6 and six this season, and I'm so sticking by that because of the tough schedule that they have ahead yeah. of them. And speaking of a tough schedule, the Green Bay Packers, they walloped the Atlanta Falcons last night, 30 to 16, moving them to 4-0 on the like on the on the season. They have went over the Vikings, Lions, Saints, and now Falcons. And then they play the Buccaneers here in the upcoming weeks as well. They are unchanged from la from last week as well. You had them at number two. Aaron Freaking Rodgers doing his thing, uh, also an MVP caliber level. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the Packers moving forward? Uh, the Packers are doing what they're doing without Devontae Adams. That in of itself is scary, man. Um, you know, just to see the tight end play last night's game, things of that nature. I mean, to see Aaron Rodgers revamped when everybody thought that it was just going to be a, a, a the rest of his career kind of being mediocrity and just floating through it and just be be basically saying you know i'm aaron Rodgers, who gives a shit i did what i did and that makes me one of the best ever um you know to see the packers being the packers it's tough man especially being a vikings fan and having a show with the green bay fanatic it's it's definitely tough but they're basically my 1.5 team right now it was real tough for me not to put them in the number one spot however i still think that the chiefs reign supreme i like the post that you had earlier about how are the Chiefs, you know, the best 4-0 team ever. Um, that You have to give some thought to it, but it was a great question. So you let the cat, cat of the bag, you do have the Chiefs at number one. And to yeah. alluding to that post, like, so the Chiefs have started 4-0 the last four seasons. They're the yeah. only NFL team ever to, to do that in all of history of the NFL. So that's kind of what I was saying. Like, like sure. are they the best you know, team ever right now be, because of their starts that they had the last four season. Grand, they only have one Super Bowl out of it, but uh, you know, you line up off sides. Thank you, D. Four. Do you crush my soul still? So, <laughs> I mean, they could have easily had two two Super Bowls easily. But but with that being said, the Chiefs they did win last night. It was an ug- ug- ugly win versus the Patriots. But tell me why you had the Chiefs at number one still. I mean, it's an ugly win against the Patriots, but it's still a win against the Patriots. And I realize it's without their QB1, all the other excuses that you have, but it's still a Belichick coach team. And those are always going to be tough because Belichick never writes off any week. So I give the Chiefs the benefit of the doubt in that aspect. The other aspect is the Chiefs have the best coach in football, man, Andy Reid. And just to see what Andy Reid can do on a week-to-week basis and how he can ration his team and make it so that there isn't any one person on that offensive side of the ball that you can take out of the game and therefore you take the Chiefs out of the game. There's so many weapons. It's an endless supply. Even guys on the bench are weapons and people (laughs) don't even know it yet. So, yeah. I mean, I would like to see more production out of Clyde. I think last night was, but it was just a slow burn in and of itself. Um, but, yeah, I think once they let that cat out of the bag, I think they're kind of almost keeping Clyde. Not that he's having a crap season for a rookie, but I think they're almost keeping him on the back burner right now until they really need to let him explode because he will explode. That's for damn sure. Well, and and I'll, I mean, like, I am an avid Chiefs fan, obviously. Yep. And, you know, I, I follow the team very, very closely. And you still realize that we have three running backs uh, for that team right yep. now, even with Damian Williams opting out for the COVID right. season. So we could, in theory, have four tailbacks on like on, on this team that could that could that could produce on any other team of the NFL. Plus, they have six receivers. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean, like like just like what you alluded to, they they have people on the bench. Byron Pringle comes to mind. He is a number six number receiver on that team <laughs> he still he still runs a four four one nine yeah. 40 yard dash and and he he, he, he he leads all the receiving records at kansas state university yeah and he is he is sitting on the bench he yeah. is a special teams blocker on kickoff re- right re- re- return so i mean the kansas state chiefs they're the the only way you are going to able to ever beat this team is keep their offense off 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 of the field much yeah. like what the Falcons tried to do to the Packers last night when they had that 99-yard drive. That has to be the most demoralizing thing ever, a 99-yard drive and settle for a field goal. Uh, yeah. it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. But that, that is how you, 
teams are going to have to beat the Kansas City Chiefs to keep their offense off of the field moving forward. Yeah. So, I mean, the Chiefs do improve for, to 4 0 last night with the win over the Patriots, 26 to 10. So that gives us that, I believe, a six undefeated teams right, right now in this uh, young NFL season. Like you, like, like, like you have the Bills, you have the Chiefs, um, Packers. Packers. Who else we got yep. here? Uh, uh, so, we have Steelers, Titans, and no, ti- no Titans in here. But yeah, yeah, they're undefeated, of course. Seahawks. But, yeah, and, and, and Seahawks, yes. So, yep. uh, what team do you see that is undefeated right now going into week five of the NFL season? What team will be the last undefeated team in the NFL season? Oh, great question. I like that one a lot. Um, I would have to say the that as of right now, um, I'm going to give it to the pack. And that's scary. I don't think that there will be an undefeated team past week seven. I think that past week seven, there will no longer be any undefeated teams in the league. I think the scheduling is just too tough on these teams. If you look at the schedules for all these undefeated teams, the rubber is about to hit the road if it already hasn't. And You might pull out one here and there, but when you start going on the roads, fans or not, it doesn't matter, man. And that's another thing that you're hearing a lot of players talk about this year is that home games are home games, but on the road – there isn't that diversity of it. You're, you're still right. hearing there's so much communication, whether you have 5,000 fans in the stands, whatever it is, it really doesn't matter. I had some buddies that went down to the Texans Vikings game and they said they would never pay for tickets to go to a game again this season. If it was going to be the limited attendance, because they would have had more fun watching it at home for one. And for right. two, it was so eerie <laughs> that you didn't even want to be there. It felt like you weren't even at a sporting event. It was like, you know, JV getting ready for the high, the senior squad. So Right. And speaking of, I mean, we saw the effects of no fans was when Aaron Rodgers with that, the Metronome or the uh, uh, Super or whatever, the, the Saints, yeah. the Saints, Saints Stadium, and oh, he's sure. doing hard counts on the road. I mean, yeah. drawing them off like, like off sides. It's absolutely re- ridiculous. But look at the Packers schedule moving forward. So you said like week seven they they like they might lose and they'll be the last undefeated team. Their next game up is the Buccaneers on the yeah. road and they're out then they're on the road at the Houston Texans and they play the Vikings, 49ers, and Jaguars. So I think if they get past that Bucks game, you know, that's a very, very good yeah. shot. Definitely. And, I do think so. I think that 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 trap game is gonna be San Fran. And yeah. even even the Jaguars, they might not be a good team, but they are a trap team. They yeah, are a the trap team yeah. for anybody that's scheming against them. They say, oh, we just got the Jaguars this week. I mean, look at what happened to the Rams going into this week. They thought they just had the Giants, right? Well, that was almost a trap game in of itself. So <laughs> if the right. best teams in the league are going to be able to come in week in, week out, and not visualize their opponent, they're going to just realize we need to perform otherwise it's one week at a time. It's kind of like the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers. PJ Fleck always says it's a one week season, right? We're O and O. That's what it's all about, man. It, that's how you get good teams, and that's what it's going to come down to. So, yeah, and like my picks are going to come are are, are going to come down basically to these head to head matchups moving forward because you have the Titans versus the Bills coming up next week, and then you have the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Bills like the following week. Yeah, I think who I think who whoever wins that Tennessee Bills game is going to be the last undefeated team moving forward. If it's the Tennessee Titans, they'll still finish 8th and 8. I don't care if they start 8-0 right. or not. They're still going to finish 8-8 eight and eight because of the, uh, the back end of their schedule was pretty tough. And yep. then, of course, the Kansas City Chiefs, they have a fairly easier schedule. They have the Jets and Broncos coming up. But with, but with all that being said, Matt, as always, thank you for uh, giving us your power ranking. So just to recap here, guys, we do have number 10, the Cleveland Browns, number 9, the Rams, Number eight, the Buccaneers. Number seven, you got the Saints, unchanged from last week. Seahawks, and then we have number five, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Number four, the Ravens. Three, Bills. Two, Packers. And number one, the Kansas City Chiefs. Are there yeah. any teams on the outside looking in? Right, 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 right now that got their toes dipping in the top ten? Yeah, I think definitely the Titans do. I mean, it, they're the team that I don't want to give respect to as well. They don't have a loss and they have a tough schedule coming up. So that that's going to be interesting to see how that clings up. I mean, other than that, I mean, the Bears are hot trash. But my other team that I like is the Colts. You know, we've we've yeah. continued to ride with the Colts even through adversity. Um, you know, that team is just so, so well coached, but also – 
if you can get it done with Philip Rivers, which is not easy, it's not an easy task to get it done with Philip Rivers. But if you can, look out, man, because you got Jonathan Taylor back there just bruising. And I think a lot of people expected the Colts to break out. But why would you expect the running game to break out against the Bears? I mean, yeah. a lot of people were like, oh, he had a shit game. Dude, it's the Bears defense, man. It's yeah, still, it's are good still the monsters of midway. It, it is still what it is. Um, but that offense, though, I thought Trubisky wasn't starting the game. And then you saw Foles come in and you thought it was Trubisky, except he wasn't running around. So just <laughs> hot shit for that quarterback. And I'm glad I could take some of Combs' cash. So that's what it's all about. Yeah, so uh, I, I, you're going to be on Triple Shot Sports later t- oh, tonight. Yeah. Yep. And uh, definitely give it to Coombs 100% because Nick Foles is an habitual backup quarterback. Yeah. But, but Benz, thank you for being on here. We'll be, we'll talk to you next week. Guys, yeah, check yeah. out Benzie's bit over on the All Access Sports Network. He's live Tuesdays at 11 a.m. East Coast time. And then also Twist Nation Saturdays at yeah, yeah. noon Central time. So Beautiful. any closing thoughts, Ben, before we let you go? Not really, man. Other than uh, how about those Vikings? Wow, I wish we would have lost and we'll get beat real bad by the Seahawks this weekend. (laughs) Other than that, thanks for having me on TwistSportsTalk.com. Peace. All right. All right, man. Uh, Guys, we're going to take a quick little break. On the other side of the break, we got the two-minute warning coming up. Guys, stay tuned here on the Mike and Mike Man Hour. Guys, Michael Buckeyes are here live, raw, and uncut sports talk coming at you on the Tuesday edition, manhour.com. Head over there, guys. Check us out. We got hats, hoodies, and t shirts as well. Mike and Mike Manhour.com. Check us out. Give us a donation over there as well. Always give those shout outs to Amber Damage's purchase, like Jameson did the other night. He purchased a hat, and yeah, I believe he got the all black one. My, my, mine is the white on black. I, sh- I should have got all black. I mean, all all black is the way to go, one hundred percent. So, guys, we had Matt Benz on earlier for from All Access Sports Network, giving us his NFL power rankings, at, like we do every Tuesday. And those power rankings are a little, they're a, a little suspect. I, I, I'm, like I'm, I'm going to say, I mean, putting the Browns in at number ten. I mean, come on, I mean, the Browns are the Browns. They they find new ways to lose every year and yes they're three and one awesome but they'll still finish seven and nine i mean they, they got a tough schedule moving forward so we will we'll see how they do and then the rams yes i the I, I was high i was high on the rams until sunday when i saw the giants did what they did to them it was a 10 to 9 game late in the fourth quarter it was like four three to four four minutes left and the giants just basically shit the shit the bed they sent the blitz they left the middle wide open for cooper cuff for a uh, 60 yard touchdown pass. I mean, yes, they're still losing the game, but it was a 10 to 9 to score when you're struggling against the Giants. The Giants are hot garbage right now. Meaning, yes, the, you still you still got to have the Bucks in the in in the top 10. You know, they're they're doing well. They're 3 and 1. Things are start, start starting to click. Saints, you know, the Saints at number 7. This is this is the biggest head scratcher I like I, I think. I'm not for sure if you can have a 500 team in the top 10, if you are a part of our trash talk groups, which you should be, head over to facebook.com, search sports trash talk. And the first one that com, comes up is the Mike and Mike Man, our sports trash talk group. Jameson posted that you should not have a 500 team in the top top 10 ever. And I disagree with that, but this early in the season, it is hard to put the Saints in the top 10 when they are a 500 ball club. Uh, and then, uh, of course, he has the Seahawks in at now number six. I, like I said, I have them at number two. I think the Seahawks are easily one of, one of the, if not the best team in the, in the NFL right now behind the Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs as well. So just to give you guys my top 10 that I would have right now, 
I, I would put the Green Bay Packers in at number one, the Seattle Seahawks at number two, the Chiefs at number three. I do like the Steelers at number four. Coming in at number five, the Buffalo Bills. Number six, I would slide in the Buccaneers like in there. I mean, yes, probably a, a little high, but you know what it is. It what it is it, it is what it is. Number seven, I'm going to put the Indianapolis Colts in there. Number eight, the Tennessee Titans. Number nine, I am going to slide in the um, Patriots. I still think the Patriots are a really really good good team. Uh, not having Cam last night definitely hurt the morale of the team. Would it affect the outcome? No, but it would affect their performance, the the look of the game and the feel for the game for them. And then at number 10, I'm going to slide in the Chicago Bears to give Brandon Coombs some love. So, yeah, that is that. Is that. And, guys, it is that special time of day. Let me get the sounds queued up here. It is time for the – That will bring us to the two-minute warning. And on today's two-minute warning, guys, if, if you guys have been living under a rock, we kind of alluded to it earlier a little bit, but the Houston Texans finally – Fire Bill O'Brien from head coach in the NFL or the Houston Texans GM late last night or early afternoon, I should should say. This is three years too too late for the Houston Texans. He's he's been there for seven years and he has given up a 28 point lead in the playoffs. He's given up a 21 point lead in the playoffs and a 17 point lead in the playoffs, all first round and games as and games as well. So Bill O'Brien, I'm sorry that you lost your job. I'm sorry that you lost your general manager job. But Houston Texans, you were digging your own grave when you made him the general manager and the head football coach. You cannot double dip like that 100%. And then he traded in the best receiver that you ever had or probably will ever have for a seventh-round draft pick. And Johnson, a running back that hasn't done shit for you since week week one. Houston Texans, you guys might as well tank this season. 0-16. 0-16. I don't like Romeo Cornell either as a Chiefs, Chiefs fan. He didn't do shit for us either. So, Houston Texans and Bill O'Brien, sorry sorry that you guys are getting a, a divorce, but at the end of the day, Houston Texans, you got it coming for you. Bill O'Brien should probably never land another job ever in the NFL again with the performance that he's done in Houston. But that's that. Mike and Mike Manhour.com, guys. Head over there, pick up a t-shirt, head over to the YouTube channel, Tomorrow, same time, same place, 1 p.m. East Coast time, right on the YouTube channel. Have a good day.